J.K. Rowling's right, isn't she, that uh, we can't necessarily trust the Labour Party. Some would say also the Tory party of some of the things that Boris has said. If uh, politicians don't know what a woman is, how can they protect women's rights? I do find it kind of interesting that um, you've got somebody taking on someone who has such a stellar career in law and a stellar career in human rights, um, um, equalities and things like this. And actually, so you've got someone who's an author of fiction trying to tell a barrister what the law says. But I completely understand that there is a difference in the sense of how an individual person um, wants to define a woman and how women in general do versus what the law says. What the law says about gender, what the law says about transition, what the law says within the Gender Recognition Act and the Equality Act are not exactly the same as a biological definition of woman or anyone's social definition of passing through society as a woman, because everyone for centuries has been passing through society as how they appear, and people have been policing appearance and stereotypes for centuries. Katie, first of all, um, J.K. Rowling is a woman and therefore J.K. Rowling is rather more entitled than uh, Keir Starmer to define what a woman is, I would say, wouldn't you? Doesn't She's not telling a barrister what the law is. So she's pointing out a woman is probably best placed to know what a woman is. I thought... Well, she actually did say he got the law wrong, well, which, is kind of, which I thought was quite funny. Every human being has, a, 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 has, has surely a basic knowledge of simple biology. There is a simple matter of fact. One can be totally respectful of trans rights and be totally respectful of your rights, to call yourself what you want, to live your life as you want. However, where trans rights conflict with women's rights, we need to pay attention to whose rights should uh, be more important. And I would say women's rights are more important because of the risk to women from biological men, whether they are living genuinely as trans people or I think the real threat really comes from uh, from men who are using and abusing trans rights to gain access to women's safe spaces. My daughter's right as a 15 year old to go into a changing room and be safe and not have anyone who is a biological man in that room, I think trumps, for instance, you know, yours or any other trans person's feelings. Simple as that. And to a degree, I, I agree. And I think we all have a right to be safe. And I think the law already has those separate definitions of woman within the sex. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. We have trans no. women yeah, we in We have sex discrimination prisons. protection within the Equality Act. And we have transition protection within the Equality Act. And we have exemptions and protections where there is a reasonable um, position to have those things. So we already have those things laid out. It's down to interpretation. The law already, already provides protection for both. What we have, though, is we have a lot of road crashes of things like in the prison sector where things like um, risk assessments have gone wrong, where the things shouldn't have happened. That No one with a sexual violence history should be in any any safe space, single sex space, particularly in prison where there are so many vulnerable women. But yet the law has allowed that to happen. Prison governors say, well, yes, no, this person says that the they're law. a woman. People we have to put them the in a woman's prison. We've had refuges. We've had people like sacked from refuges because they're saying there shouldn't be male bodies in women's refuges, from women who are largely going to refuges to, to seek safety from, from sexual and physical violence from men. Um, I mean, to me, it's, it's, it's not even a debate. It, the real issue, I think, is that this is developing, I think, into a, a round that trans activists who don't necessarily represent the majority of trans people, which are a very, very, very small number of people who probably all hold completely different individual rights on these things. There isn't a trans community in that sense. And so as in the same way, women don't all hold the same views. Um, but but the, the, they are actually they're trampling over women's rights and they're not doing any favours to people who are trans because they're actually they're actually sort of turning, you know, women, uh, you know, uh, against this issue, which is which is surely no, no, no. not the right this thing is, at this all. Is, I, I hear you on that completely, and I think you've actually nailed it when you said not even all women agree. And women don't agree on this. I've just come back from spending the whole weekend at the Women of the World Festival run by Jude Kelly in London at the South Bank, and it's full of hundreds, and in previous years pre-COVID, it's been full of thousands of women. And those people have actually been 100%, or maybe it's 95%, who knows, but it's a majority accepting place of trans, and it's a place where you actually have no problem being there. And I was actually arguing a middle of the road position which is where I would put myself I would say of saying we need to be able to have respectful debates about this so you just yes. said there's no debate but there are people on 
the, on the trans accepting side within people who are women also saying there is no bait and i was arguing to us blue in the face yesterday with someone saying but katie why will you not call yourself a woman i i you know i was very comfortable being introduced as a trans person i don't need to take language that has already I, has I, a that's what i was asked to introduce you as trans person trans no, woman but, I'm I, very but, I would, but i would not call you a woman because you're not I, a woman you're a trans I, person I, I, and that, and I'm okay with you not calling me a woman, but it is also other people's rights to call themselves women. And it's no, the right... no, it's not. No, no, no because wait, that's wait, wait. a lie. And it's up to, and it is also the right of other women to choose to call me a woman or to use she pronouns if they want. I'm very happy with they pronouns because it excludes me from the entire debate of, of let's have this polarised binaries. But I do think that we have to recognise that, you know, J.K. Rowling does not represent all women. I think all she represents the vast majority of women who've worked I don't think that is true. true. The Social attitude surveys actually... Oh, no, 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 no. Social attitude surveys are... No, that's because most people have not woken up to women's sport being obliterated by failed male athletes taking over in women's <laughs> sport. They've not woken up to boys and, and, and teenage boys and, and men being in their daughters' changing rooms. And there are and obvious cases like it. in sports and things like that where things have clearly gone wrong. People have made what they thought was an inclusive decision but it has clearly backfired and they did not no, put the safety of women in. They did not put the safety of women and girls first, which I absolutely do agree you and should do. And Katie, I think the you trouble is it didn't backfire. That was what they planned to do. That was the thing. It, that, who this, who this planned is to do the this? People who, Where's the, the conspiracy any, theory? The anybody trans. who is fighting to have male-bodied athletes competing against women, knowing the, co the obvious physical differences, they, it wasn't an accident. It wasn't an accident. They knew what they were doing. But I don't believe that, that. Where is this conspiracy that people are fighting to put male-bodied athletes in women's spaces? There, there, there are, are campaign veterans. groups. That's literally but what they're doing. Look, we're going to have to leave it. Katie, I really hope you will come on again. It's been very good to talk to you.